And I want you to take these three fingers, which are the fingers of skill in a human being. This is what makes us skillful as human beings. Take these three fingers, button a button, zip a zipper, pick your pen up to write. Anything you do with skill, manipulation, these three fingers are the fingers of manipulation. They allow you to take objects and manipulate them. They allow you to turn a page. They allow you to fold, to, to, to do all kinds of amazing things. These three fingers. There's what give you, these three fingers give you skill. Two of them are not enough. If you use these two, you can't do a whole lot. If you use these two, you can do more, but you still can't do everything. You do these three, you can do a whole bunch. But these, when you put them all together, do this, make you strong and bring you together. When it comes to dementia, what I would say, when dementia hits a single person, do this, it's inside one person's brain. And it's changing their brain. It's destroying their brain. It's killing them. It's killing their brain, and because your brain runs your body, it's going to kill your body. But this, do this, do this. This is just a shell that you live in. I mean, now it's an important shell, and this is how you get things to happen. Your eyes, your ears, your, your hands, your feet. When you put it all together, it's pretty effective as a package. But what makes it do what it does is this up here. But there's more to us than just our brains and our bodies. When we're people of faith, we believe there's more to it than that. And there's this space that I live in, but then there's this space that I live in. And I'm part of this bigger piece, this whole. And so because I am, this is just a definition of me, but when we're together, we become more. But each of us has within us this, this self that we have. And then there's this something that makes us more. And do this. When it comes to dementia, we often have one person who's going to be the care person. And our relationship was one way. We helped each other. We came away from each other. We came together. We came apart. We did things. We have a relationship. But it's been a relationship of relationship, of choice. And now, do this, it's starting to be forced. And it's starting to hurt and pinch sometimes because it doesn't feel right. It's not like it used to be. And sometimes I want to be a part or sometimes you want to be a part, but it's sometimes hard for us to do that because I may need some help. So do this. Then we have this other, this other person who's part of a relationship. And sometimes it's like this, but sometimes it's like that, and sometimes this, and sometimes this. But when it comes to faith communities, we have sometimes, do this, the person who has dementia, the person who's trying to help, and then the other. And the other is beyond us. The other is not of us. It's, it's this other. Yeah. Now, do this. As my dementia, do this, grows, it gets harder and harder for this person and this person to see me as an equal partner. It gets easier and easier to see me, do this, as the one who's less and missing out and not getting it. And so the things that we tend to do in a faith community that do this, that bring us together and give us a sense of fellowship and belonging, start to feel less and less like something of value to, you think, to this person. And so do this. You guys want to be together, but do this. You don't want me there. <laughs> because I start to seem other. Wait a minute. There was already another. And what we sometimes have a hard time then sorting out, do this. Is this person closer to the other than I am? Am I closer to the other than this person is? Or do we leave this other out? Well, that's not a good thing. Because where does the skill come from? By bringing them all together. And are they all equally important? Absolutely. And can they all come together? Yeah. But who's going to have to change once this happens? The others. We're going to have to make some shifts, some changes. And the hardest part for us is to do this. Continue to see this person as whole and complete as the house falls apart and the brain can't do the things it used to do, but it's still whole and complete in our faith.
And it gets really difficult when my behavior becomes a behavior we don't like in our faith, that we don't believe in, that I hit my daughter, that I, that I swear in this location where we call a worship service, where I talk about things I shouldn't talk about and behave in ways I shouldn't behave. And it feels like, do this, I should behave better than that. And the question is, can those others figure out how not do this, to sit in judgment of me, but reach acceptance and appreciation and understanding of the why behind what's happening and let that be separate from the person who I am that is whole. Because I'm still in here, but I'm so different. Not because I want to be, but because the house is falling apart and the unit that runs everything is coming to pieces. 